Yo, peace was good. Welcome to another store, my CD collection. This is part 20. Let's get the show started. First song I want to talk about is um, Here Comes the Lords by Lords of the Underground, released in 1993. For those who don't know who Lords of the Underground is, they're a group from Newark, New Jersey, or Brick City. Uh, they got their start back in the early 90s, um, 1990 to be uh, specific. And, um, you know, they was discovered by Molly Mall. Um, they're known for their affiliation with Molly Mall. And also, th with this album, this actually started, I guess, like the introduction to uh, Kate Def, another, um, I guess, Molly Mall's prodigy. Uh, it was Molly Mall's prodigy, excuse me. Um, very dope producer. In fact, I'm trying to get my hands on um, the real live album, um, the turnaround, uh, a, a real awaited drama. I'm trying to get my hands on that shit, but that shit is actually out of print. And it goes for pretty um for a pretty penny. You know me, I'm not spending you know crazy money over a CD. Although I would be a hypocrite, I did spend forty dollars on the the Cloud Nine album by um Tech by Nine. But here's the difference: it's by Nine himself, and it was autographed. So I thought it, I definitely thought it was worth it. But if it was like from another dude, like a regular dude, I I, I wouldn't go that far unless it's from the artist himself. Then I would buy it. But um. Anyways, getting back to this album, very dope album, um, solid early 90s hip hop. Um, if you're a fan of early 90s hip hop, like especially from like the 92, 93 era, specifically 93, you'll definitely enjoy this album. Known for singles, um, let me read, uh, Here Comes the Lords, Funky Child. Um, the horns, in fact, were, um, were sampled by, um, French Montana used it for this song um, Shot Caller that came out back in 2011 which was a big banger back in um, 2011 um, especially in New York because I remember I went to New York um, two years ago and that's all you heard playing in High 97 but anyways um, and then and Lords of the Underground they actually get residuals they get royalties from that song so you know you already know anyways Funky Child uh, Flow On, which was like the last single of the album, which came out back in like 94, which was like the last single of the album. Um, Psycho, which was actually the, the first single that came out back in 92. And um, Chief Rocker, so it was like five singles off the album. Um, but yeah, highly recommend it, man. Very dope. Love this album. Um, trying to get my hands on the second album, Keepers of, Keepers of the Funk, which came out a year later back in 94. But I almost actually had a print, and as well as Resurrection that came out back in '99, and they also came out with an album called um, House of Lords, I think it's called, back in 2007. But I almost actually came out like under the radar. It wasn't really didn't really get no promotion or anything. Um, I believe that's actually out of print too. But um, I really want to get my hands on um, Keepers of the Funk, but you know that's like I said, it's out of print, and it's a little, it's definitely hard to come by, and it goes for like. I seen it as much for like thirty dollars on on Amazon and like other places too. So, um, but yeah, um, definitely will try to get my hands on that for a decent price. Um, this album is it, it might be a little hard to find, but it's not out of print. Um, you could, it's still in print. So, if you could get your hands on this, definitely pick this album up. Very slept on. Then we got a, a group called Rocket by Roots. Uh, Education for your ear. This album was actually released back in nineteen ninety six. Um, Ragged by Roots, for those who don't know who they are, they were a group from Costa Rica, my mom's um, motherland, her home, t home homeland, uh, old country, I should say. Um, they, uh, like I said, they're a Raga group, a Raga group, excuse me, uh, which is like dance or mixed with hip hop, um, hence the name Raga. Um, like I said, they were considered, I think they considered like, um, the highest selling group out of Costa Rica. Um, I guess as far as like, um, I think either ever or as far as like in like, like I guess like they would like to call it urban music. Um, I guess to say it, um, to say the least. Excuse me. But um, yeah, very dope album. I love it. This album when it first came out, it went crazy because you know Costa Rica is not really known for music like that. You know what I mean? Um, especially like in Central America. Um, very dope album. When you listen to it, it's definitely very dated. You can tell, like you can you can tell they used a lot of um, a lot of stock sounds from whatever sampler that they used back in the day. So um, expect that. Um, 
this album actually is hard to come by, very hard to, it's very rare. Even in Costa Rica, it's out of print because, you know, Costa Rica, is, like I said, is not really known for music, so you could tell this album was actually released in limited quality, um, quantity, excuse me. I actually had the cassette of this album, but that was long, that's long gone, so um, don't know where that shit is. I, I lost that shit years ago, but um, yeah, definitely dope. Known for the single, um, Jump to the Sound, which is the first song of the album. Um, like I said, if you show this, like I said, in Costa Rica, if you have this, this is definitely a collector's item. So, um, if you can get your hands on this album, um, definitely keep it. If you have it in your collection, keep it, don't give it away. Because, like I said, it's actually out of print. So, um, good luck finding this. Uh, this is uh, Ragga by Roots, Education by Your Ear, released in 1986. Then we got uh, Fuji's um, Translated Crew, um, Blunder by Reality, released in 1994. Uh, Fuji's, um, you guys should know who the Fuji's are, a uh, Haitian American group from um, East Orange, New Jersey. I think um, Lauren Hill, I don't think she's, I think she's the only one that's not Haitian. i um, not sure about that, but um, I know Duffy Pross and um, White Clef are Haitian. Um, like I said, they got this start back in the early 90s. I think back in like 92, they got this start. Um, yeah, um, like I said, this is their first album. A lot of people think the score is their first album. It's not. This album is actually their first album. Um, like I said, it was released in 94. Uh, this album is known for singles. Uh, came out, I believe it, three singles, which were, uh, Booth Bath, which was the first single of the album. Um, Nappy Heads and, um, Vocab. Like I said, this album, if you're expecting something like the score, you'll definitely be disappointed. Um, this album is not for everybody's taste. Like I said, if you're expecting the score, you'll definitely be disappointed because this album is, uh, is nothing like the score. It's completely different. Um, think, um, what, what could I compare this album to? Um, I guess... Something like a little bit like De La Soul, like balloon, like balloon mind state De La Soul, but with acoustic, with acoustic, um, your guitars and shit like that. Yes, it definitely has like, um, you know, like samples and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely jazz oriented, but it also uses like a lot of live instruments, live instrumentation with White Club John, because you know, he likes to use the um, acoustic guitar. Um, he's like, he likes to fuck with the guitar. But um, like I said, this album might not be for everybody's taste. Um, definitely underrated. Definitely not their best album. In fact, this album didn't really sell very well. It sold, I believe, 130,000 copies, which isn't shit today. I mean, which isn't shit, which wasn't shit back in the day. Um, 130,000 copies today is complete is considered successful, which is pretty sad to say the least. You know what I mean? But um, like I said, if you guys want to know how they sounded back in the early 90s, um, particularly 93, 94, then this is I'm gonna pick up. If I'm not mistaken, this album is actually out of print. If I'm not mistaken, um, if it's not, it might be a little hard to find. But um, definitely pick it up. If you're a fan of Fuji's, you want to hear how they sounded back in the day. This album is to pick up. Uh, Fuji's, um, uh, Blended of Reality, released in 1994. This is when they were um, known as the Translated Crew, and then um, they got the name Fuji's because um representing the, um, the refugees of Haiti and stuff like that. So they cut off refugees and they called it Fuji's and has named Fuji's. Um, this is one of reality, but it's 94. Then we got uh, What's Our Connection, uh, Bow Down, released in 1996. Um, classic album, classic West Coast hip hop album. Um, highly influential, uh, known for um, which consists of the members of Ice Cube himself, uh, Mac 10, which is the middle, and um, WC. Very dope album. The production on this album is fucking phenomenal. Um, this album is definitely controversial in its right. Uh, around this time, it was when the East Coast, West Coast beef was brewing. It was at its peak, you know what I mean? Um, they definitely went after cats like um, Cypress Hill. Um, Common and Q-Tip, and this is just the whole West, um, East Coast, uh, specifically New York in general. Um, how they got their start? 
with the group, I mean, with the um, with the beef, with Common was um, where the Common came out the song um, I Used to Love Her from his second um, Resurrection. Uh, he talked about how um, the, he was doing it like this. The whole song was a metaphor for hip hop. He was just saying how the hip hop, how hip hop was changing around the time, how West Coast was pretty much um, hip hop was on a drastic change of how West Coast was, was taking over, kind of like how the South is taking over right now. Um, but it was using the metaphor. Um, but the way he said it, I guess Ice Cube took um, took offense to that. And so he, um, hit, well, Mac-10 made a song called um, West Side Slaughterhouse in his first album, Mac-10, that came out back in 1995. And they pretty much just the whole East Coast on that song. And then throughout this whole album and it was just in the east coast and stuff like that and you know things like that and um with cypress hill um cypress hill and ice cube had a relations because with dj mugs when um, ice cube uh, made songs with dj mugs back in um back in the early albums like um predator and um i believe death certificate if i'm not mistaken he made a song with um, dj mugs but definitely with um with um with uh, the predator with the song um Tear this motherfucker up, which is one of my favorite songs of the album. But anyways, um, Q, uh, Be Real from Cypress Hill, he did a a, a, a recent uh interview where he said like um um Ice Cube um stole a line from the song Throw You Sun in the Air, and um with this for the song Friday um Ice Cube song Friday um where he said Throw Your Hands in the Air. And with the with the chorus and stuff like that, with the song Friday, um, and um, Be Real took offense to that and shit like that, and they made a diss song to Ice Cube on the Temple of Boom album called um, No Rest for the Wicked, which they diss Ice Cube, and that's how that whole um, that's that whole um, beef with Ice Cube and um, Be Real started and shit like that, and um, the Q-Tip, I'm not sure how that beef started, but um. Yeah, singles as I was known for are, um, it only came out with two singles, um, Bow Down and Gangsters Make the Go, Makes the World Go Around and stuff like that. Um, like I said, the production on this album, very solid, very dope. Um, to me, the last time I heard Ice Cube this dope, because after, when he started coming out with like, the World War, War and Peace albums and his later albums, I kind of, kind of stopped checking for Ice Cube, you know what I mean? I like the angry ice cube. That's the ice cube I like, you know what I mean? But um definitely pick it up. If you like mid nineties West Coast G Funk hip hop, definitely pick it up. Let me check how much time I have left. Alright, still got time. Then we got the executioners, um with the second album, Built from Scratch, released in 2002. The executioner executioners, um they were a group from um, from the Bronx, New York, if I'm not mis mistaken. Um, or, well, no, actually, they, they were all from the Bronx. Because um, some of the groups, some of the members are from the Bronx, some are from Queens. Um, some Like, they were all over from New York. But anyways, uh, they got their start back in the late night, late 80s, excuse me. Um, I believe back in 89. Um, they were known as the X-Men. Uh, you know, they're known for their distinctive scratching style. And stuff like that. Um, they they won numerous uh, championships in the DMC um, World Championships and shit like that. Um, you know they got together. They were like I said, they were known as X Men, but they had to change their name because of um, copyright issues. You know with the um, comics or with the Marvel Comics um, X Men, so they had to change their name for that. And um, they named themselves the Executioners. And um, they come out with their first album called. Um, I believe it was called the Expressions, if I'm not mistaken. But um, that one was actually out of print. It's hard to come by. It's heavily, highly sought after. I'm trying to get my hands on the album. And um, two, um, five years later, they came out with this album, um, Built from Scratch. Um, believe it or not, this was my introduction to Executions because I didn't know who they were before. Um, particularly with the song um, It's Going Down with Linkin Park. Fucking love that song. Um, to me, one of their best songs that they ever came out with. Um, the video is dope. Um, very dope album. Um, very boom bap influenced and stuff like that. You have people like, um, you know, Lost Professor, 
Uh, who else? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Lost Professor, Big Pun. Um, Biz Marquis. MOP. Um, Dan the Automator. Um, Feral Monch. And stuff like that. And a lot of this album is like made up with interludes, which is them scratching, you know, like they'll put up like an instrumentals and shit like that, like their own instrumentals that they made and you just hit them scratching and stuff like that. Um, DJ Premier is also actually on this album as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely a dope album. I believe this album is actually out of print as well. So um, if you can find your hands on this album, definitely pick it up. This is uh, Built From Scratch by The Executioners, released in 2002. Then we got Black Moon's first album, Enter the Stage, released in 1993. Classic, 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 classic album. Fucking love this album. Um, what what's more to say about this album? This album is fucking sick. Um, Black Moon, for those who know who don't know about Black Moon, uh, they got their start back in 1992. Um, you know they, um, I forgot I forgot the name they were under. Um, they were under a different name, or unless they were known as Black Moon. Um, their names is an acronym for something. It's fucking long. I forgot what it stands for, but um album is fucking it's so brooklyn i mean that's how ill this album is it's so dark it's gritty you know i always have the base with myself with which album i like better this album or the smith and western the shining because they're so similar um i don't know for me i like them both you know it's kind of like choosing your favorite kid for me it depends on the day you know some days i might like enter the stage a little bit more some days I might like the shining more. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. I'm in excuse me. Uh, singles as I was known for are um, Who Got the Props, which was the first single which came out back in '92. Um, Buck 'em Down, but not not the, the not the album version, which I prefer more. The remix version. Um, what else? Uh, I got you open. The remix version with the Barry White sample. And how many MCs? I yeah, yeah. got the props, bump them down. Um, I got your open, and how many? So that's four. That's four singles off the album. Obviously, this is the highest selling album to date. Um, I do have their their um first three. I have this album. I have the diggers diggers in the vaults, which is not considered their first. The second album is more like a compilation album. I I briefly explained about that album. And um, the Warzone album, which came out in '99, which I feel like is very slept on, but yeah, very dope album, man. Um, I kind of wish they kind of go back to the roots of this album, kind of like the sound-wise, at least. Maybe not. They don't have to rap the same like they did back in '93, but just like the sound-wise, I kind of want that sonic sound from Enter the Stage into their newer albums because the Beat Miners, I like them as a as a producer group, but. I think over the years it kind of like their I was the songs got a little bit too polished for my taste. They just I don't know they're not as dirty like they used to be. But um, yeah man, if they could kind of go back to this sound, I would fucking appreciate that. But you know they said that they're never gonna make an album like Enter the Sage again, like sound wise. So if you want an album like that, you just gotta keep listening to this album, and that's understandable. But you know I just kind of wish. You know, I just like that dirty sound from this album, you know what I mean? But this is Enter the Stage, Black Moon, released in 1993. Pick it up. Then we got Spice One's second album, 187 He Wrote, released in 1993. Um, by far, this is one of my favorite albums from Spice One. If I have to say, I would have to say this is actually his best album. Very dope album, very solid. Um classic west coast g-funk hip-hop bay area hip-hop i always feel like spice woman was very slept on he's very underrated uh when people think of gangster rap people especially from the west coast people always talk about ice cube or um snoop dogg or ice t but they never mention spice one you know what i mean um and it's kind of fucked up because i feel like spice one has put in mad work he's he deserves a lot more mention than he really does in my opinion um, but anyways, known for singles like um, The Murder Show with MC8, um, uh, what was the song, um, 
dumping him in ditches, which they have a video for. And um, Trigger Got No Trigger Got No Heart, which was also a single as well. Um, there's um, there's two versions of this song. There's a song called Trigger Trigger Got Triggers Got No Heart, which is featured on this album. And you got the song Niggas Got No Heart. Niggas Got No Heart, which was featured on on the Minister Society soundtrack. And I believe there's a single, there's a video for that version too. Um, but yeah, very dope album, classic West Coast hip hop. Um, Spice One, I feel like deserves a lot more mention. Very underrated, highly recommended. I believe this album is actually out of print. In fact, his earlier albums are actually out of print. Um, this album is out of print. America's Nightmare is out of print. Um, 1996 is out of print. And um, I believe Black Bossolini is actually out of print too. And his later albums too. But um, definitely, um, if you like West Coast hip hop, G Funk, um, Barry hip hop, you'll definitely enjoy this album. Then we got um, Lost Boys, Legal Drug Money, um, classic East Coast hip hop. Um, definitely one of the epitomes of mid 90s hip hop. Um, this album couldn't have come out, out at a better time. Um, very dope album. Classic group from Queens. And they're also a gang too, a street gang too. Um, got this start back in the mid 90s. I want to say maybe like 94. They got this start. Um, known for singles. Um, what are the singles off that album? I have to read it off. Um, the Urine, which was actually featured, I believe, on... Um, on the Don't Be The Man's soundtrack, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, Music Makes Me High, which was the single. Jeep Sleps, Coops, Beamers, and Benz, which was the first single of the album. Um, Lifestyles of the Rich and Shameless. No, Lifestyles of the Rich and Shameless was the first single, excuse me. Jeep Sleps, Coops, Leps, Coops, it was the second single, if I'm not mistaken. A uh, Renee and um, Get Up, which was the singles of the album. Um, highly recommended. Um, what I like about this album is it's, it's very different. It's very it's original in my in my opinion. Um, they're known for their like melodic flows and shit like that. Um, shit that that Drake was doing now, um, you know, they were doing before. Um, so a lot of people think that you know Drake is what Drake is doing is original. As far as flow wise, it isn't because they were doing that back in '95. So. Um, and stuff like that, and a lot of people kind of should have let um, Lost Boys on that. Like, they were they weren't kind of used to that. They were they were kind of like, oh, this is kind of corny and da 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 da. But it was something new, something original, kind of reminiscent of Bone Bone Thugs and Harmony, but with a New York twist. That's how I get out of Lost Boys. You know what I mean? Not comparing them to that, but like, like I guess like the styles as far as like rapping, not you you guys know what I mean with the whole harmon harmonizing and shit like that. Um, but yeah, very dope album, very underrated. Um, it's the type of joint that you can play in parties. Um, it, it has party cuts, it has street cuts. It's like a well-rounded album. Very dope, highly recommended. And then the next, last album that I want to talk about is The System of a Down. This is their first album, the self-titled, self-titled album, System of a Down. This was released in 1998. A system of down, system of a down is a group from LA, from LA, California. They got their start back in the early '90s. I want to say back in '94. Um, they got their start. Um, they went under a different name. They went. Um, they they were uh, they were called victims of a down, but then they changed the name to System of a Down, and um, released this album. My cousin put my cousin Edwin. He put me onto this album. He put me onto them. Uh, specifically with the song Sugar, which was I believe it was his first single. Um, very dope album. Um, this album is like one of the pinnacle albums of um, the whole new metal movement that started back in '98. Um, '98 was definitely like the year that you know that um, the whole new metal uh, movement started. That really not started, but really got probably got mainstream. You know what I mean? And um, this is one of the albums that when you think of new metal, this is an album that you should automatically think about. Um, besides like Limp Biscuit and Corn. But um, yeah, known for singles like um Sugar and Spiders, which I believe is the last single of the album. But um, if you like 
new metal, um, that type of shit, then you'll definitely enjoy this album. And that's it. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'll definitely make another one later on tonight or later on today. So uh, stay tuned for that. Peace.